Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone is having a great day today. Uh, the time is now 12 o'clock, so we'll go ahead uh, and get started. So uh, welcome to another edition of our TABC Talks. So just a uh, disclaimer, the following agency guidance was developed to improve internal and external communications and ensure a more consistent application of the TABC statutes and rules. This guidance reflects appropriate processes, requirements, and interpretations based on general situations presented. This guidance may not apply to every situation. If you have questions about this guide, how this guidance applies to your specific circumstance, please contact TABC directly. So you can interact uh, with me by using the chat feature located at the toolbar, uh, located in the toolbar at the bottom of the presentation window. Uh, if you experience any technical issues, you can also visit uh, Zoom Help Center. So this afternoon, we're gonna be discussing temporary events, alcohol sales, service, donations, and promotions. Uh, my name is Stacy Jackson. I'm a regional manager for the Audit Investigations Division, and I'm a station in San Antonio. So, uh, overview of the presentation: uh, Does the event require a TBC permit? General requirements for permitted events when a nonprofit is conducting alcohol sales uh, versus when a TBC licensed business is conducting alcohol sales. Uh, venue options for permitted events, sponsorship limits for permitted events, and general requirements for non-permitted uh, events. Is a permit required? If alcohol is being sold, you need a permit. Alcohol is sold if the exchange of money is required to access it. Free or ticketed, e ticketed events that have a cash bar inside uh, ticketed events that have an open bar only if non-ticket holders are denied alcohol upon a request. If alcohol is not being sold, no permit is required. So uh, selling tickets uh, when a permit is, uh, if a permit is required. No permit is needed if the event requires an entry fee so long as a non-paying person can request and receive alcoholic beverages provided for free at the event. You can choose to let the non-paying person into the event or to bring the beverage to the person at the event entrance. Admitting the person into the event is not required. So permitted events when a nonprofit organization is conducting the sales of alcohol. So nonprofits may conduct sales by obtaining a nonprofit entity temporary event permit. Each permitted event uh, must be limited to 10 days. There's no limit on the number of, event, of events held in one year. So eligibility meet the defin definition of a nonprofit in the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Code. Uh, so a nonprofit corporation or a charitable civic or religious organization, political party or political association supporting a candidate for office, fraternal organization in continuous existence for more than five years. Uh, uh, sales and service may sell, serve, and auction alcoholic beverages at a temporary event. Uh, the alcohol source nonprofit must purchase the alcohol from a package store or a wholesaler uh, distributor. So, how to apply uh, for a the nonprofit in, entity uh, temporary event uh, approval form? Uh, you can log into our AIM system and complete the notice online, or you can also download the form uh, on our via our public website. Uh, you also would email the form uh, to the appropriate region as indicated on the form. Uh, application fee is $50 multiplied by the number of days of the event. Uh, 
Submit uh, the form at least 10 days prior to the event or pay late filing fees. Uh, $300 if it's seven to nine days prior to the event, $500 if it's four to six days prior to the event, $900 if it's one to three days prior to the event. Uh, so for the nonprofit uh, temporary event approval form, you must wait to receive approval from TABC. If only auctioning off alcohol, so no alcohol sales, there is no application fee and it can be filed at any time prior to the event and there's no need to wait for TABC approval. So permitted events when a TABC licensed business is conducting the sales. So event host gets a TABC permitted business to sell alcohol at the event. The business must have a TABC permit for selling alcohol for on-premise consumption, which are the uh, permits that are listed below. TABC permitted business follows a form with TABC prior to the event. So they have two options. They can uh, use a file and use notification form, uh, which is for small or private events. Uh, you can submit any time prior to the event or the temporary e event approval form, submit at least 10 days prior to the event. Uh, only the permitted business and its employees can conduct alcohol sales and service at the event. So option one, the filing use notification form. So eligibility, uh, small private uh, events not sponsored by a manufacturer or distributor, so the estimated wholesale value of alcohol provided or sold is less than $10,000. Estimated attendance is no more than 500 people. The event is private and not open to the general public. So ticket sales and events uh, longer than one day may indicate a public event. The event is not sponsored by an alcohol distributor, wholesaler, or manufacturer, and the owner of the event location has authorized sale of alcohol at the event. So how you would apply uh, via the following use form, you can log on to our AIM system uh, and complete the notice online, or you can uh, download the form from our uh, public website and again, submit to the appropriate region uh, via email. Uh, so you can submit the following use form anytime prior to the event. There's no fee for submitting the form. Uh, and you do not have to wait for uh, TABC approval. Uh, record keeping, you must keep the following records for four years. Records of the dollar amounts of alcohol purchased and sold uh, at the event, number of event attendees, uh, and agreement between the permit holder and the venue authorizing the event, uh, including the event date, hire date, type of event, and a copy of the event invitation or obituary for a funeral uh, related uh, event. Option two, uh, temporary event approval form. So use, uh, use if the event doesn't qualify for following use, the event must be limited to four days. You can submit back-to-back -back requests for the events lasting longer than four days. So you can log how to apply, you can log on to our AIM system and complete online, or you can download the form via our website and also again, submit to the appropriate region via email. So you submit at least 10 days uh, before the event or pay late filing fees. There's no fee for timely submitting the form on time. So again, the late filing fees are $300 for seven to nine days prior to the event. $500 uh, for four to six days prior to the event, and $900 if it's one to three days prior to the event. So with this temporary event uh, approval form, when it's a TABC licensed business, uh, you have to wait uh, to receive TABC approval. So venue options when the event uh, is permitted. Uh, choose a venue that's not already covered by a TABC permit or you can also contact TABC to determine uh, eligibility for redrawing the boundaries of the existing license premise. 
So the event approval only lasts for four days. Temporary event approvals and follow use notifications are effective no more than four consecutive days. For events lasting longer, more than four consecutive days, the permit holder must file additional approval forms. 10 day event limit. TVC permitted businesses are prohibited from conducting more than 10 events at the same unlicensed location if the permitted business owns also owns or leases at that same location. So an exception to that rule may be granted by the executive director or their designee. So sponsorships for permitted uh, events. Donated alcohol is not allowed at TABC permitted events. Uh, auction exception. Alcohol may be donate to, donated to nonprofits for use in an auction. Uh, monetary donations and sponsorships by non-alcohol non businesses uh, are allowed for all permitted uh, events. Uh, monetary donations and sponsorships for alcohol uh, businesses. Unlicensed nonprofit event host hires the TABC permitted nonprofits or businesses to conduct the sales. So unpermitted nonprofit may accept cash donations, uh, may enter into sponsorship agreements, and sponsors may be present to promote their uh, brand or products. The important thing to notice there is it says that an unlicensed nonprofit uh, can uh, accept the donations, uh, enter the agreements, and um, also that at that time, the sponsors may be present to promote their brand or products. So a nonprofit event host obtains a nonprofit entity temporary event permit. Um, so the permitted nonprofit host may accept cash donations, but cannot enter into an agreement regarding anything being received in exchange for a donation, which alcoholic beverages will be sold at the event and sponsorship rights, including signage um, or advertising. Events for profit TABC permitted entities. Permitted uh, for profit entity cannot accept cash donations and cannot enter into an agreement regarding anything being received in exchange for donation, uh, which alcoholic beverage products will be sold at the event. And then also sponsorship rights, including signage or advertising. Non-permitted events, alcohol is not being sold. So the alcohol source may be donated from any source or the event host may purchase the alcohol from a, a, any lawful source. If donated by an alcohol business, um, host entity or their staff must pick up the donated alcohol or hire a company that has a carrier's permit to do so. The donating alcohol business cannot deliver the alcohol. Alcohol business cannot attend the event to promote or serve their donated alcohol products. Alcohol service only conducted by the host entity, their staff, or contracted service. Venue could be any venue. Any venue may be used uh, subject to uh, local ordinances. Uh, still, again, uh, events where alcohol is not sold, sponsorships, any person or business can financially sponsor the event. Agreements, nonprofit entity may enter into sponsorship or underwriting agreements with members of the alcoholic beverage industry, including agreements for advertising, signage, and product exclusivity. If alcohol, so in summary, if alcohol is being sold, you need a permit. If alcohol is not being sold, no permit is required. Nonprofit organizations may conduct sales by obtaining a nonprofit entity temporary event permit. Uh, TABC permitted businesses may sell alcohol at events if they hold a permit for on-premise consumption. Sponsorship limits for permitted events. Alcohol businesses may sponsor, but there are restrictions. So again, if you have any questions, you can put that, uh, you can ask them uh, via the chat feature. Um, and then also uh, any others, uh, you can email to our stakeholder uh, email box.
Again, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to make recommendations about future presentation, you can also email those to our stakeholder email box. Also help us improve this program uh, by participating in a short survey following this presentation. Okay, so it looks like we have a few questions. Okay, let's see. Oh, I apologize about that if the audio um, was not good. I hope everybody um, was able to hear the presentation, but these uh, presentations are recorded and they can, uh, they will be uh, uh, uploaded onto our public website. Okay, what if a brewery was hosting the event versus a different event um, host? So um, can you elaborate on your question? Is this William Benz? If you can unmute yourself. So a brewery can't, um, a brewery is not, if, it, if they have a brewery license, uh, they don't, they're not an on-premise, that's not an on-premise uh, permit. So they would only be able to host events on their location. Hope that answers your question. If you need an additional, um, you also have access to our stakeholder email, so you can email uh, there if uh, I didn't answer your question. Okay, so if an MB licensee wants to hold a public event in their parking lot, is a permit um, required, required? I think that there is an extension um, that you can do if you want to hold an event um, in your parking lot. Um, but if that were the case, then you'd have to rope off, you know, obviously that area because it's the same uh, thing as your, your MB permit to extend your um, location. So you'd have to block it off so people can walk off um, and walk on uh, with the product. Okay, yes, like I said, the, the uh, presentations will be uploaded onto our public website for you to um, reference back to all of the um, past um, TABC talks that we have done are uploaded onto our uh, public website. And then we also have a YouTube channel where they're located as well. Okay, would you please explain the redrawing of the premise and those times that it is approved. Um, so just for example, um, the, the um, I forget what it's called. Uh, we have the JW Marriott here, because uh, I know that they do it every year. I think it's, uh, I don't want to get the name wrong, but I, know, I think it's called the Texas Open. So I think currently for the JW Marriott, their permit covers the entire address. So whenever they um, are doing the Texas Open, they submit a um, application to change their diagram. So they take off like certain holes, like the 18th hole, so that they can have um, sponsorship occur uh, at that 18th hole for this uh, Texas Open that they do. So I hope that answers your question, Amy. I believe that that's um, who asked the question. So temporarily you could submit an application to um, take off portions of your license premise um, if you're gonna have these types of events uh, there. Will there be a document for the slideshow you presented? Um, no, I don't think that they have, it's gonna be a physical document. Like I said, they're, all of them are on the public website or you can access them um, on the YouTube channel. I think, cause this is Amy, Amy Vivens. 
I think, Amy, we have them um, on our internal website uh, for you to actually um, look at the, um, the slides. So please clarify when you say any venue may be used. I assume that is not true if the TABC permitted uh, location. Uh, yes, so I think when it said any venue can be used, that was talking about uh, if alcohol sales um, if there's not going to be a permit for the event, I think that's when it mentioned uh, that any location can be used. But yes, you are correct. Um, so, for example, if they're having an auction, they could actually use a TABC uh, permitted location um, if it's a um, they're doing an auction there because it's specifically uh, for an auction and then it's a nonprofit uh, that is putting on the auction. If a brewery donates product to a nonprofit for an event, can they accept monetary donations in return from the product without a permit? Can they accept monetary donations in return from the product without the permit. I believe it states that in the um, presentation. Let me go back here. Maybe it's at the very beginning. I have to confirm um, your question. If you can send that to the stakeholder email, Evan Camp, uh, just so I can uh, make sure that I give you the correct answer. Is a permit needed if the event is being held in a parking lot of an already permitted restaurant? No. For permit for profit businesses are signs that the vendor is having made specifically for the event considered a donation. Um, so the only way that um, the distributor or manufacturer can give a location that has a permit signs is if they are uh, not brand specific. So they have to be like a general sign um that can uh are not uh not my apologies i mean say brand specific but not retailer specific so it can't say saint patrick's day um hosted by um uh, stacy's bar so that would be an illegal sign um and then it it, it would depend on uh yeah, so they, if it just simply says St. Patrick's Day, as long as it can be taken around to any, any retailer can use it. Will these slides, uh, science and... Okay, so for, for private events where a distillery where a distillery products are being poured as a donation, are the distillery's representatives allowed to pour the products if it is not being sold for profit? So if it's, it would depend on if there is a permit there. So remember, uh, if, you, if I hold a TABC permit, um, I have the option to get a fallen use. So fallen use are for private events. So if they use a file in, in use and it's, um, they buy the product from the distillery, so the distillery can be there at that point, um, you know, talking and discussing their product. If there's no permit there at the location, then no, the distillery could not be there.
Is it possible for a permitted lo location to go dark for a single day or two for a temporary event that lasts the weekend and then go back live without filing a reinstatement? I'm not 100% sure um, about the response to that question. So I'd have to ask my licensing department. So again, if you want to send that to our stakeholder email, just so I make sure that I give you uh, the proper answer uh, for your question. So the signs would say, welcome to the first annual Patty Fest. So that's not a general sign. So because you're saying first, it will never, you know, after it will never be a first annual Patty Fest at that point. That's not a general sign that every retailer could use. What if the products are donated and not um, purchased? I believe Jonathan, are, are you the one who asked about the distillery? So again, if, uh, okay, if um, it would depend on if there is a permit there or not. So are you asking if there, if it's an event where the permit is there or there's no permit there? If they have a permit, then they can't donate the product. The only way they would be able to donate it if there's no permit, and then they would not be able to go to the location um, and pour the, and, and discuss the product. Okay, you're welcome. Does anybody else have any other questions? And so, um, I know it was a couple of people I wasn't, I was unsure of the answer. So again, if you could email those uh, to our stakeholder um, at tabc.texas.gov so that I can make sure uh, that I get the proper answer to your question. Okay, nobody else has any questions. Uh, again, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, to our TBC Talks, and I hope everybody has a wonderful afternoon.